Hello chess friends and welcome to Azarov Chess Channel and welcome to our best chess games of all time series. So in this series we're following the best of the best, the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history and today I wanted to show you really a cool and an immortal game played by the legendary beast from Baku, the legendary Gary Kasparov with the black pieces against Vladimir Kramnik. So we have here now two former world champions, uh, the game was played in 1994 in Munich it was a rapid game, uh, so it was a little bit faster to time format, but uh, I really like this rapid game, so they're also instructive, and uh, this game that I wanted to show you today has great, great tactical elements in this uh, Petrosian variation of the King's Indian. If you're familiar more with my YouTube chess channel, I've created also more than 45 uh, videos uh, in the King's Indian opening preparation, so you can also check out the series. This game uh, will be added uh, also in the King's Indian series, so you can add it into your opening preparation while playing as black and that's why I decided to flip the board today and show you this game from black's perspective or I wanted to show you the game from Gary Kasparov's perspective this is really an insane game because you're in this particular line you're giving up your queen in an early stage of the game you're giving up your queen for two minor pieces but the problem from white's perspective is that white cannot activate the queen, uh, cannot open the position, basically in this pos uh, in this particular line you're playing sort of a positional line uh, then after your queen sacrifice. So let's check out the game. We have so far d4 played by Kramnik, uh, knight to f6 by Kasparov, uh, c4, g6, so Gary Kasparov was really the master of the King's Indian, so if you want to study more the King's Indian, just watch uh, Gary Kasparov's game, there are really, really some great, uh, great tactical games. In the game knight to c3, bishop to g7 after e4 we have d6 still the common theory and the knight to f3 castling played by kasparov so here bishop to e2 uh, e5 uh, was played by kasparov i'm not going to explain you now the whole opening theory about uh, for instance there is this possibility to play the exchange variation d takes e5 but the more important thing in this particular moment is uh white's next move so if white uh, for instance goes castling and uh, we play for instance the move knight to c6 then after d5 we have after knight to e7 the classical or the orthodox uh, line of the king's indian but uh, here uh, after the move e5 uh, kramnik plays the move immediately d5 and um, in this orthodox line you had uh, you have already played the move knight to c6 and you're placing your knight on e7 so at least you have some kind of a development uh, with with your uh, knight on b8 but the problem is then after the move knight to e7 let's here check it out this particular line that your opponent uh, will play of course the queen's uh, queen side attack with your po with his pawns because we have always this directed pawn structure in the center so it means black will coordinate the attack on the king side uh, because the pawns are showing us the direction of the attack on the other hand uh, white will coordinate the attack on the queen side and from black's perspective in this particular line uh, white has always the troubles you don't have any more minor pieces to defend but at least you have some kind of an activity with your knight on e7 after the move d5 here uh, the problem is that you cannot jump on your natural square on c6 and the problem is also from black's perspective that white will push the pawn on b4 that's the main idea uh, here and try to uh, uh, crack the position with the move c5 so you have to create so some kind of a blocking system here that's why the common move uh, in the petrosian variation is the move a5 at least white needs some more tempos in order to create something like a3 b4 uh maybe a bishop to d2 bishop to e3 so white needs more moves more tempos to make something happen on the queen side so that's why this a5 move is a common idea after bishop to g5 uh here we have the pinning idea not allowing uh, this knight to jump somewhere because in our king's indian setups as i said when we have this blocked pawn structure in the center the main goal is to push the pawn on f5 so here with the move bishop to g5 kramnik has also slowed down a little bit gary kasparov's attack because at least you have to make something with your knight maybe get the queen out of the pin then move the knight and then finally push the pawn on f5 so it, you see this is uh, really sort of a game in which you don't want to lose tempos or allow uh, your opponent to get some tempos so that's why here you see very nice positional ideas of this petrosian is to move a5 blocking out the queen side a little bit bishop to g5 blocking out a little bit the king side so uh, h6 uh, here uh, kasparov attacked the bishop uh, 
taking out the knight is not such a good idea because you don't want to lose your bishop here in an early stage of the game uh, it would be dangerous uh, here in the game um, Kramnik played the move bishop to h4 and uh, now knight to a6 uh, which is a common idea again we are controlling also the b4 square so no b4 pawn break breakthroughs are possible and finally uh, Kramnik castle uh, we have bishop to d7 this move is a positional preparation as i said uh, we want to block the queen side uh, somehow if we play the knight to c5 the main positional idea would be to play a4 to block the position on the queen side but we'll come to that particular moment and here a knight to d2 uh, played by uh, kramnik we have knight to c5 so this e4 is sort of a cracking position in, in this Petrosian variation still we cannot play something like queen to e8 knight to h7 f5 it would be a little bit too slow uh, so uh, now white has several choices here if uh, white plays for instance to move queen to c2 in order to protect further this uh, pawn on e4 uh, there is a line in which maybe white uh, pardon me black can go g5 and then after bishop to h6 we could go h5 simply pushing forward as i said we want to be faster on our attack we are coordinating the uh, coordinating the, the attack on the king side so after move h5 you see with the move queen to d1 you lost the control of this h5 square so maybe an idea would be also f3 but it's a little bit too passive uh, again we can play uh, some uh, g5 ideas and after that h5 so in the game queen to uh, uh, queen to c2 would be still i think uh, the best continuation here for white in the game b3 uh, was played by uh, um, by vladimir kramnik and the problem is now that this Paul, uh, this knight on c3 is a little bit loose it's not protected anymore and with the move knight uh, from uh, f3 to d2 you have lost uh, the protection of your bishop on h4 so here is the critical moment of the game here Gary Kasparov decides to go into one of the wildest lines of the king's indian he goes knight takes e4 sacrificing the queen of course if you take out the knight uh, on e4 you lose the bishop you see that's the problem about this connection when you have lost uh, the connection between, between your knight on f3 and your bishop on h4 so basically the best way is, to, is simply to take out the queen so after bishop takes d8 we have knight takes c3 first attacking the queen so you cannot remove the queen for instance on c2 because we can simply take knight takes uh, e2 the connection is lost between the queen and the bishop that's the problem and after king to h1 we would then have another attack knight to d4 attacking the queen and after queen to d1 uh, we have now finally rook takes uh, rook takes d8 and um, here is the problem you have lost three minor pieces for the queen but uh, there is a great thing about this position of blacks you have still all of your pawns on the board you still have all of your eight pawns on the board so that's the main problem you cannot crack the position immediately you cannot uh, open the position so that's why here queen to e1 was played by kramnik protecting this bishop on e2 and now finally rook takes d8 and uh, what to do now we have two minor pieces for the queen let's find now the best next move for white uh, in the game um, kramnik played i think it was a mistake because uh, he played the move rook to c1 he was trying uh, to decoy a little bit to black to take out the spawn on a2 and then maybe play rook to a1 and trying finally to open the position because if you want to play with the queen against these two minor pieces you want to you want the position to be opened but now after rook to c1 uh, still uh, here we can simply take out uh, the pawn that's the main problem and uh, still you lose a tempo you lose another move you lose another activity maybe the best way instead of this move rook to c1 is to play uh, simply f3 uh, here not to place the rook black would probably play here f5 uh, we can play something like bishop to d1 and here after something like rook to uh, e8 i think there is a simplification line we could try knight to e4 here attacking the knight after knight takes uh, e4 we have uh, f takes e4 knight takes e4 but now bishop to c2 is i think playable for white still uh black has a good position because we have these two centralized pawns we have two pawns and two minor pieces now for the queen 
I'm still not seeing a clear way how white should win this position, but at least this is playable. In the game, as I said, rook to c1 was played instead of this f3 move, and this was another mistake, I think, by Vladimir Kramnik. Here, Gary Kasparov simply took knight takes a2, we have rook to a1, and now knight to b4. Fixing the position, still we have the possibility to play the move b6, really keeping the position on the queen side compact, and in the game, uh, bishop to d1, but it's a little bit too late because now we have the possibility to push further with the move e4. So again, Kramnik didn't play this move f3, we have liberated the bishop, uh, the bishop, darts for bishop diagonal, against the rook, so here... Um, Rook to b1 has to be played because uh, if you try rook to c1, then you get to fork on d3. So still some dangerous, dangerous tactics here for 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 black. Uh, in the game, rook to e8 was played by Kasparov, and now queen to e3, trying to create sort of a blocking system against uh, here this advanced pawns because now uh, Kasparov's idea is to pl play f5. Uh, g5 and f4 and in the game f5 was played anyway by uh, Kasparov and h4 uh, this is a preparation of uh, Kramnik to create a blocking system not allowing uh, Kasparov to push this pawn further but uh, there is simply not a better way here for uh, Kramnik let's for instance see a possible f4 move it blocks a little bit uh, the position, but then we can take Ampassan, of course, e takes uh, f3 is the possibility after queen takes f3, now bishop to d4 is really, really tricky, after king to h1, we can simply play bishop to e3, uh, attacking the knight, the knight doesn't have a good square, that's the main problem, you have to counterplay with some queen to g3 ideas, but now after king to uh, king to h7, still uh, the knight is attacked after knight to f3, here I think knight to uh, e4 wins the game immediately because you don't have good squares, if you try the queen to h3, then you get to fork knight to f2, you have to give up the rook, if you for instance try uh, queen to e1, then you get a very very dangerous move here, knight to d3, you see how these pieces are dancing uh, around the queen, if you take for instance, then we have knight to g3, a discovered attack and you lose the queen, and I think this is uh, simply a too, so much better position here for, for black, so that's why the game in the game h4 was played by Kramnik trying to block the attack a little bit so he didn't play this f4 idea and in the game rook to f8 simply played by Kasparov continued to push uh, with the preparation to play here the move f4 kicking away the queen getting this two pawns mobile on the fourth rank it would be very dangerous if for instance uh, black connects the pawns here on f4 and e4 so that's why here g3 was played but again it's a little bit uh, too passive now uh, here Kasparov activates all of the pieces here on the king side although these knights are uh, still on the queen side but they can come into the game very very fast here on the square d3 and now the pieces are really aiming all of them are aiming on the king side so this is really a dangerous position still with the queen on the board but I'm not seeing a good way how white should make progress here. In the game, king to g2 was played trying to get some kind of activity, maybe rook to h1, opening the position somehow. But again, opening the position is still dangerous for white because this harmony, this perfect harmony of these minor pieces is too much to handle here for white. In the game, knight to d3, you see, it's very easy to find the best squares, the best activity for the, for the, for black's pieces. And uh, here, rook to g1 uh, played by by Kramnik. Let's see again a possible continuation if this f4 move ha happens. It's not again such a good idea because again we have this discovered attack, queen takes f3 and now I think uh, f4 is a great move opening the position. You don't want to open the position in front of your queen but if you play g4 I saw this per per particular line then the queen gets trapped here so you would lose further material and eventually the game so the you see how dangerous this attack by Gary Kasparov was. After the move uh, rook to g1, Gary Kasparov played um, f4 anyway, cracking the position. And after g takes f4, we have rook takes f4. Uh, h5 was played, but here Kasparov is not allowing any counterplay possibilities. You don't want to take, of course, uh, uh, the pawn because then maybe the bishop comes into the game. Here Kasparov played a really firm and compact, compact structure with the move g5, supporting the f4 rook, still with the possibility 
possibilities to double up rooks, to activate the bishop on active square, for instance here on e5 or d4. So many, many possibilities. Uh, rook to f1 was played by Kramnik and now uh, rook to h4. I like also this idea to play rook to f8 immediately for instance if you try bishop to e2 then i think bishop to e5 is perfectly fine activating again if you take we have uh, can simply play here rook to g4 attacking the king and after king to h1 still we can play another check here you can maybe try again king to g2 but now we can simply take out uh here you know, this uh, this bishop and now there is this main threat to play the move bishop to h3 still still dangerous stuff here bishop to f4 is the possibility so again the queen is endangered here uh, again i think this is a better position for for uh, for for black uh, so in the game rook to h4 was played not this rook to f8 idea uh, trying to get this other rook on f4 connecting again the pieces but whatever you do basically here from black's perspective it's good because uh, white is too passive white uh, white pieces are really cramped here in the game rook to h1 trying to do, uh, trade off the rooks simplify the position but of course karika sparov is not allowing these types of uh, lines rook to f4 uh, getting the rook back rook to f1 and now finally this idea rook to f8 uh, connecting the rooks f3 uh, trying at least somehow crack the position but it's again another problem we have rook to h4 again in the game f takes e4 was played rook uh, knight to f4 attacking the king if you tra take the rook uh, the knight on f4 again you don't gain anything you just lost your rook for a knight uh, still we can activate this other knight uh, in in a couple of moves get this knight again on f4 in the game you know, here king to g1 was played by uh, by kramnik and we have a knight to uh, d3 connecting again this rooks uh, this knight pardon me now you see all of the pieces are again glued together this bishop's activity uh, this knight activity on the third rank the rook's activity the rook has made some progress and uh, what to do here from white perspective let's see possible continuation if we try rook to f4 rook takes f4 uh, is a good move here for for black of course and now maybe knight to uh, f3 you could play but here rook to g4 again creating some dangerous attacks you have only one square for the king to f1 and then maybe rook to h1 again very very dangerous so this is already a lost game but let's see uh how it happened in the game e5 was played by kramnik he tried to open again the position somehow activate his pieces but you see white doesn't even have the rook connection still this bishop is on this very passive square the bishop is blocked out by its own pawns here uh, maybe you could try here like e5 uh, trying to open the light square diagonal but again it's too late here knight takes e5 was played and now we have rook to c1 a desperate try here to uh, activate the rook because again here uh, Gary Kasparov has simply attacking moves we have knight to f3 covering everything and now of course g4 using the pin here and here Kramnik tried uh, to get some material back to simplify the position maybe get a draw here with the move knight to e5 which was a good idea at least trying somehow hang on to this position rook takes e3 and now uh, knight to uh, knight to d7 uh, trying to get into an end game in which we have opposite side uh, uh opposite colored bishops two knights on the board and uh, two rooks okay black is a pawn up but there is one problem as i said the rook connection is not present here in white's position again uh, this activity of black pieces is simply too much to handle knight to h3 play guys by by kasparov king to g1 uh, g2 and now simply taking rook takes uh, f1 king takes f1 and now g3 and uh, what to do here again uh, the problem is uh, this pawn uh, will get further with potential knight to f4 moves and then uh, the move uh, g2 is the serious threat with uh, the support of the bishop uh, then we could maybe promote here to g1 and uh, you could try maybe bishop to g4 attacking the knight but still this idea uh, knight to f4 is uh, too dangerous here you could try maybe uh, rook to d1 and now rook to b3 simply taking out this uh, pawn that's the main problem and now we have another pass pawn and the good thing about this pass pawn that it's supported here the last square uh, the a1 is supported by the bishop so now the threat is to play simply uh, g2 bishop to d4 
uh, if the position allows it. So you, this this rook has to cover uh, this d4 square because uh, if you get checked with the dark square bishop, then we can also promote to g1, and again it would be game over. But now this rook is simply too overloaded to, uh, to the defense of this d4 square. Now this pass pawn is again a very dangerous uh, dangerous pawn, and again this would be completely winning uh, here for uh, for black. You cannot activate the knight. The knight is out of game. You could try maybe c5, uh, but again a4, simply pushing further. And I'm not seeing a good way how white should defend this. So, in the game, as said, after the move g3, uh, not this bishop to g4 idea was played here. King to uh, g2 was played, but now uh, here knight to f4, and in this position, uh, Vladimir Kramnik resigned. What to do here? Uh, if you try uh, king to uh, g1, then you get checkmated uh, here with the move uh, rook to e1. You don't have any squares for your king, so you would be forced to play something like, I don't know, king to f1. But now, again, this very, very dangerous move, uh, g2, you have to play something like, I don't know, king to f2. But now, uh, rook to h3 with the preparation to play a bishop to uh, d4 and it's game over so let's see we could try knight to f6 bishop takes f6 and now after bishop to bishop to f3 here this is the main main idea the problem is you don't uh, you have to bring your king also on this uh, first rank because uh, you don't have any squares left uh, so you would love to even give up your rook maybe on g1 but again the promotion to queen is too dangerous and it would be game over so after this move uh here knight to f4 in this position vladimir kramnik resigned and it was game over great great attack by the beast from baku here with the queen sacrifice in an early stage of the game with uh, with a very very nice opening preparation check out sometimes this line if you're familiar more with this king's indian i think it's a good queen sacrifice you can play it uh, you can play very actively with your minor pieces like Kair Kasparov did in this particular game you can also check out my King's Indian videos as I said here's the link uh, I have created uh, many many opening lines in this particular opening and you can also watch my other best chess games of all times if you want to see the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history and you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content thanks you for watching guys and uh, Chess is the best, of course.